Hello, class. Uh, here we are in the conference room one more time. Uh, still waiting for the chance to get back and have Sunday school at the church. Maybe that won't be much longer. Uh, today's lesson is God's clear vision. You know, Martha and I, we went to uh, Colorado, the mountains, take a break, and we were coming back. And on the way back, I was driving, and my vision wasn't just crystal clear. So when I got back, I went and checked in with the eye doctor and said, man, it's just, it's good. I can see it's safe to drive, but it's just not as clear as it should be. And he's supposed to be the best, so he checked my eyes. See, I wanted to have vision. And in having God's clear vision, you, 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 without vision, you can't visualize what you're looking at. It won't be sharp. It won't be clear. God's children need to learn to have God's clear vision in their lives. In everything we do, we need to know what God's vision for our life is, and we have to see clearly in that. And when we learn to see with God's eyes, then we can take action in, in doing what God is showing us to do. You see, we can have a vision, but if we don't take action, then the vision is no good. Did you realize that vision without action is merely a dream? Action without vision just passes the time, but vision with action can change the world. You see, I think the church, and we're the church, the people are the church, I think we have vision sometimes, but we don't have any action on it. And I think sometimes we have action, we don't have a vision. But to be clear in what God has a vision for us to do, then we have to have the vision with action, and then we can change this world. Did you realize that you can see what God has in store for you? You can get a clear vision just by reading your Bible, by seeing the words in the Bible. Words paint pictures in your mind. Don't believe me? Well, if I say the word dog, what just went into your mind? Did the letters D-O-G go in there? No. You pictured a dog. You might have pictured your dog. You might have pictured a dog on TV, Lassie or Snoopy. But if I said big, mean, brown dog, you would picture a different dog. So the words that I speak to you uh, have meaning. They give you a vision. They put something in your mind. They put an image in your mind. What you see puts an image in your mind, and you will speak or take action on that vision. So when you're reading the Word, God's love letter, God's guidebook to you, these words are putting images into your mind because that's what they're intended to do, and you will get a clear vision of what God intends for you to do. Words are powerful. They're containers that can carry faith, hope, and love, or they can carry fear, doubt, and hate. And man, in today's times, if you've been watching the internet or your TV, then you know what I'm talking about. We've got all these people out here that they have this opinion, they got that opinion, your movie stars have an opinion, the politicians have an opinion, and all of these images on all these words are going into the minds of those people. Again, if we go to the Word of God, then we're going to get a different image we're going to get a different vision of how God wants us to be living down here on this earth. Uh, words are powerful, uh, they are important, and they can determine your eternal destiny. Let's read in uh, Romans chapter 10, uh, verses 9 and 10. Romans 10, 9 and 10. This is what the Word of God says to you. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. These words, when you read them, should put an image in your head and give you clear vision of how you're going to be living in, e in heaven eternally with God. It's by seeing the word and then speaking the word. I believe the word of God, therefore I speak the word of God. And also in Proverbs... Chapter 18, 21, Proverbs 18, 21 says this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. In other words, death and life is in the power of the tongue. It says in another version in the Bible, uh, I lay before you death and life. Choose life. 
So God's words are written to us for us to read them, for us to get an image and a vision of what he would want us to do. They are powerful. Uh, we are able to speak words uh, in part of, uh, of you that impart God's word into you. We have a unique privilege to choose and speak the words that come out of our mouths. No other creature besides us has that ability. It's a unique gift from God. My dog, I love my dogs, but they can't speak the word of God. We can. We have that unique ability. Uh, let's say you have a big job promotion and you're going to be in charge of a large operation telling a lot of people what they're going to be doing. You're going to be leading a large group. You're going to have this important job. Your words are going to have a lot of weight and consequences. So as you're speaking to this group of people and leading this group of people in your job, your words are going to create images in, in their heads. You're going to give them a, a vision, and you need to be careful with that. In the Bible, Joshua had some big shoes to fill. He was taking over after Moses. And God told Joshua to not let the book of the law or the word of God depart out of his mouth. God told Joshua to meditate on it day and night. Let's read the book in uh, Joshua. Let's read uh, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Turn over to Joshua, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouths, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not frightened, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua was to read these words, stay in this book, and, and stay uh, in, in tact with the word of God. Uh, that way, God knew that the vision that he was going to give him through, through the word that he had at the time uh, was going to help him be successful and stay strong. And we know that that worked for Joshua. It's good advice for us too. We read God's word. He gives us a clear vision, an image of what he wants us to do. It goes into our mind and then we speak back the word of God. And then we take action. In other words, we get a vision from God we get an image in our head from reading the word, and then we are to take action. I believe the word of God, therefore I speak the word of God. We become co-laborers with God. This is powerful stuff. If you have a poor image of yourself, maybe some of you have a poor image of yourself, you want have that poor image after you read God's word and see what he thinks about you. After reading God's word, you're going to have an image in your uh, mind and your being that the word of God gives you a vision of a loving, caring God, a father that thought you were so valuable that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross just for you. That makes you a pretty important person. And so you have a poor image. That poor image will be replaced with a strong, powerful image of of who you really are. Let's say that you're scared all the time and you have an image of being scared and anxious all the time. You stick your nose in this love letter. You read the words in this guidebook and God's words are going to give you a clear vision and an image of, of a child of God heading to a place that's been prepared for you and you will lose that fear and you will lose being anxious all the time. Let's say you worry that you're going to... Uh, step out for the Lord. Let's say that uh, you think, man, that the Lord's called you like Joshua and you're going to step out, but, but you worry about what you're going to say. Well, don't worry about what you're going to say. When you read the Word, God gives you a clear vision and an image of what He can do with you. Let's read Luke. Let's go to Luke. Uh, let's see here. Luke 12, 11, and 12. Luke 12, 11 and 12. And when you are brought to trial in the synagogues and before rulers and authorities, don't worry about how to defend yourself or what to say. 
for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what needs to be said. You read the Word of God. He gives you a promise. He gives you an image. You don't have to worry about what you're going to say when you go out to do the Lord's work. You just walk in the Spirit. God's going to give you the words to say to those people or leader or whoever you're going to be set in front of. The Holy Spirit will teach you what to say. God's clear vision for your life is in the Word. God has given you everything you need. He has given you faith in His Word and the Holy Spirit with power. Read and meditate on God's Word and let it begin to shape images within you. Then you will speak it out of your mouth with power and in faith. The church is what will change a hurting world. I've told you this several times. It's not going to be the politicians. It's not going to be the government. It is going to be the church. We have to arise up. We have to read the Word of God. We have to get the image of what we're supposed to be, and then we have to take action. We have been sitting on the sidelines for just too long. The image that we have has been the world image. And we got to get rid of that image, and we have to get God's image. And the only way to do that is for us to read God's Word. I can teach you God's Word. Uh, the pastor can preach you God's Word. Uh, you can listen to music. But really, you're not going to get the vision until you actually pick up the Word of God, read it for yourself, and let it speak to you and put images in your mind of what God has called you to be and what God has called you to do. So, you want to see America coming back to God? Well, right now, that would take a miracle. Uh, quite honestly, it would be a miracle for America to be able to come back to God right now. Well, according to what I read in this Bible, as I read in here, it puts images of an almighty God, an all-powerful God, an all-caring God, that works, where he still works miracles. America needs a miracle. As we read the Word of God and we get the image of what God can do, we step out and we know by the power of the Holy Spirit and the God that we serve that he is still a miracle worker. If you need a change in America, God's a miracle worker. You step out and you speak it. You speak God's word to a hurting world, and I guarantee you the hate will go away. But you have to believe in faith. I believe the word of God, therefore I speak the word of God. And you can't believe the word of God and you can't speak the word of God unless you know the Word of God. You have to read the Scriptures, you have to believe the Scriptures are true, and then you have to walk in faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are the church. The people are the church. And we walk in Holy Spirit power. And when we get to that point, with that image in our minds and in our heart, then clearly the church will change this city, this state, and the entire United States. Satan right now is having a heyday. And he's having a heyday because he knows that if he can destroy the word and keep the word from going out of the church, then he wins the battle. That's what he attacks. He attacks the word along with us. But we read our word, we know our word, and then we walk in faith and power and the devil loses. It's actually an easy answer for America to become uh, different than what it is right now. We just turn back to the Lord. We just turn back to God and we throw our hands up. We say, we're sorry for what we've been doing, but we're going to do different. We're going to read your word. We're going to walk forward with power and we are going to make a change in America. I believe the word of God. Therefore, I speak the word of God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this teaching today. Father God, uh, help us to have a desire to read your word. It's there as a guidebook and a love letter for us. It's there uh, designed for us to read it, to get an image, and Father, to receive power from on high. Father God, help us to read your word and not only have a vision, but that we put action with that vision. And Father the God, that we start by making a change. Father God, that we start bringing people into the kingdom of heaven. 
Father God, that we start encouraging and lifting people up rather than tearing people down. Father God, that our country, Father God, turns back to you quickly. And Father God, that the only way that can happen is for people to start reading your word and Father God, getting the image of who you are and why we're here. Father God, we thank you for what you do and we thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray, amen. Until I see you later on down the road, you stay safe and healthy, and may God bless you.